Hey everybody, Julio DeSanctis here with Hodgkin's 2 Electric Boogaloo. This is day four, the final day inside the UCLA chemo ward. I will get out tomorrow morning of one more night of infusions, probably starting in about four hours, uh, running for about three hours, four hours worth of uh, stuff. Like we have, we have the full boat tonight, all, all three or four bags of chemo as they spread um, as they spread it out during the week, and then they, they hit you with the hard stuff uh, right before they send you out on your own. <laughs> um, I did get a lovely delivery of, um, of pho from my wonderful wife here this morning. Um, pho ain't got, or chemo ain't got nothing on pho. Pho is a big, big help with uh, the fight on chemo. Um, I have no idea what the statistics are for cancer in Vietnam, but I'll tell you, there's something magical in that foe. I think I'm saying it wrong, too. Fa, fu, 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 Whatever. I like it. I like it hot with a lot of jalapenos and Thai basil. So good. I've been sticking to just the chicken because of the all the chemo stuff they're giving me can cause an upset stomach. Typically, I'm a uh, cartilage fan of pho. Fo, fee fi fo. Um, I do the uh, I do the the cartilage, and uh, and it's so good. It's so amazingly amazingly gelatinous. But I don't think my stomach could take that right now. Um, besides being the last day of chemo here, it is the uh, seventh birthday of my daughter. Uh, that was fairly disappointing not being able to make that today. Um, you know, this is the second birthday I've missed of hers. The first one, I, I at least had a good excuse. I was making a movie in Canada, and she got to take a nice trip to Calgary and got to see Banff National Park and stuff. So that was a nice little birthday. I might not have been with her on the day, but, you know, there was there was some upside to it. Uh, not a whole lot of upside with, yeah, daddy's not here because he's in the hospital with chemo and cancer. Um, but she's a trooper, this this kid. Kids can be real troopers with the, all this shit. Uh, she understands, or at least to the best of the ability of a seven-year-old understands. And more than anything, I think she's hoping that I remain bald just for the Halloween uh popularity of it the 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 idea that i can be voldemort at halloween or possibly uncle fester uh i had suggested telly savalas and kojak but her pop culture knowledge really doesn't go back very far it's pretty sad really how little pop culture she knows from the 70s um so i'm not going to be telly savalas it looks like um but uh we are going to have her birthday party which we didn't get to have now because all this we're going to have it at Halloween because um, Halloween's her favorite favorite uh, holiday by far. And um, we're going to have a costume party, right? So she's thinking of all the possibilities should my hair not return. And maybe I'll just be a sport and keep my head this fat and round uh, just so she can get Uncle Fester come, uh, come Halloween. Um, let's see. What else is going on besides that? Oh, and also, it occurred to me, although this is the dark humor that cancer brings up, you know, me missing this birthday is just lining her up to be prepared for when I'm an absentee dad. After I get better here, I, I start spending my days at the track, miss a lot of birthdays thanks to trips to Vegas and, and other immature, uh, irresponsible things that, you know, sometimes people fall into when they, they beat uh, a life-threatening disease, and then they go off the rails like, hey, I can do anything. By the way, uh, the second time of beating cancer will absolutely make it impossible for my daughter to ever tell me she can't do anything, um, especially if I stick around and be a good dad, right? Then it'll be like, no, no, you can do it. I beat cancer twice. You can do it. Um, anyway, a little bit of a ramble here. I might have a little chemo brain going on. It, you, apparently, you do get a little discombobulated with all this shit. Um, I'll tell you, you lose time. You lose time bad in the hospital. I keep seeing the shift nurses. The nurses change shifts. And I'll be like 
you did you change shifts or did you stay on? Did you are you just coming back on or have you been here the whole time? Haven't I just seen you? And the guy will be like, No, you haven't seen me since last night when I changed your IV bag. No recollection of it. It's just time stands still in the hospital. It's a bit of a Jacob's ladder type scenario here, I if I think. Um anyway, last thing before I go, uh, regarding my newly bare legs my sexy newly bare legs this morning while, you know, in like a chemo fever dream, uh, half awake at about 8 AM when they start coming in and out and, uh, taking your vitals. I, uh, you know, I'm got my hand down on my leg and I'm like, Ooh, that's a nice bald leg. And I start forgetting where I am for a second and start thinking that perhaps it's my wife's nice bald leg. And then I get to the one part where I still got hair right around the, like right around the kneecap. And I feel that, and my first thought is, well, don't complain. She often misses a spot while shaving. But then I was like, no, jackass, that's your leg. These are your bald, yet partially hairy legs. Um, So anyway, so there's that. Uh, Okay, that's it for me, whatever all this means. Keep fighting the good fight. Fuck cancer. Uh, Go get vaccinated. And in spite of the horribleness at the airport today in Afghanistan, this is still a a wild success. A hundred thousand Afghanis and Americans airlifted from Afghanistan. It it was going to be a disaster no matter what. If we didn't learn from Vietnam uh, and if we didn't learn from all the other countries that have tried to occupy Afghanistan. Okay, that's it for me. Bye bye. See you tomorrow when I'm back home. Uh, recovering from chemo.